Welcome to our mama call. We are just kind of doing some quick housekeeping. So if you want to whip out your calendars with me, we are starting our Famous in Heaven and at Home series. Um, and it will be a weekly call. So we're going to go back to the weekly format once school is back and summer is pretty much over. And the plan for things to be really in full effect is the week of the 18th. And the reason for that is I'm gone completely the week of the first on vacation. So I'll be MIA there. Um, the week of the 11th, we probably will have a call. But then the week of the 18th is really when our famous in heaven at home <laughs> Like study begins and so um, this we're gonna just set the stage the week of the 11th but then the 18th is when people are reading so I'm not sure yet if I, I don't think I'm gonna set a day every single week that's gonna be constant because I know that you guys we struggle with that on here it seems to be better when we just spontaneously pick a date that works for everybody but I'll get more into it in detail once we start so make sure you get the book I really would even though we're gonna talk about it it just I promise you, you're, it's one of those books you want to have in general. It's just so good. So that's the Famous in Heaven and at Home part. Today we're just kind of hanging out. We're going to talk about faithfulness is greater than ability, um, which if you read the She Works His Way app, it's totally inspired by that devotional from like last week, I think. But ever since I read it, it has just really tugged on my heart. So I wanted to bring it up here because I know that in motherhood and for those who are wives, it's just... Um, we tend to really focus on what we can do and our own strengths um, that we sometimes don't realize that what God's really looking for is faithfulness. <coughs> so with that said, I want to kick us off with a question. So how many of you um, really kind of measure your worth and productivity by how how, not just how busy you are, but almost how talented you are? Does anybody struggle with that? Like, do you ever weigh out your value and your productivity and your purpose by your talent, what you're good at? Do you ever get discouraged when you feel like you're not that talented and let that kind of stunt and, and hurt you? <laughs> Charmaine raised hand. I didn't even know that was an option on here. <laughs> Where do you raise your hand? <laughs> That's so cool. Um, me too. Like, I think it's kind of a hard concept to really think about, but I know for me in my personal life, it's easy to always wonder if, um, you know, like if I'm going to get picked, you know, for God's assignments or am I smart enough to do it? Am I capable enough to do it? You know, and like, think about it this way. Do you remember in gym, like back in middle school, whatever, and people pick their teams and there's two leaders and you know, like if you're not the most athletic person, nobody's going to really pick. You're going to be like last. Um, how was that girl, by the way? Like that was me. I was not the same person I am today at all in middle school and I hated sports. And so I think that a lot of times we wonder, will we be chosen? Um, and so the question that Michelle Meyer says is, for example, is my gift enough, right? Um, like is what I have actually enough for what God is calling me to do? Will I be chosen? Has my hard work paid off? Or has my entire life up to this point been a waste? Are these people around me um, going to get to celebrate me or console me? Like there's always the fear of the unknown in our journey of, you know, what if? Is it, am I enough? Is what I'm doing enough? Do I have enough talent for this? But is that what God measures it by? Like, do we actually believe that God only calls the equipped or is it the other way around? We know this quote. We hear it all the time. He equips the called. And that's so true. Like, I have been in many seasons of my life where I feel like God has called me to, to something. And I'm like, I'm not good at this. I can't. I'm not a good writer. Why do you want me to start a blog? I can't do this. Like, I'm not that smart. You want me to be a coach? I have, my, I have my own messy, messed up journey. Why? Like, and so we start to just look at our limitations and our ability. When God is looking for faithfulness, will you be faithful? Will you be obedient? Because faithfulness trumps your ability. Faithfulness trumps your talent. And so that's what I want us to kind of just dig into tonight. Tonight, today, we usually talk tonight. First Timothy 1, 12 to 13 um, is one of our scripture verses today. And it's the Apostle Paul talking here. And he says, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, 
appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. I love that scripture. And here are the two things I want us to focus on today. The first one is the quote, because he judged me faithful. Faithful, not talented, not skilled, not super smart, not super accomplished, super accomplished. He judged him faithful. And so I don't think in our world today, we talk about faithfulness nearly as much as we should. We tend to measure everything by the talent, the skill, the whatever, and, not, and very rarely by faithfulness. But God does not determine our success based on what he asks someone else to do. He determines your success by what he has called you to do and then your obedience to do it. And then the second part is appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, blasphemer, how are you say it, persecutor and insolent opponent. So Michelle says here, stop believing the lies that your past determines your future, which is something I feel like I say all the time. Your past does not determine your future. The only past that predicts your future is what Jesus did on the cross. Like, I, I'm not going to drop my mouse, but just like, can we just, did, did you hear that? The only past that determines our future is what Jesus did on the cross. That's a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. And if we are in him, our past is over and our past is forgiven. So I wanted to talk about this today for our moms, especially because I want you to know that not only does God want to use you, but he will and he can. And so if you're walking by faith, be ready for an amazing journey where we get to partner with him and share in his ministry. Because though he doesn't need us, he chooses and wants to use us. But we will always limit his ability to use us because of our own insecurities, because of our own definitions of success, our own definitions of talent, that we end up really missing out on some amazing assignments that God calls us to. And so I want us today to make that decision of just being aware of how we talk to ourselves and not diminishing our worth and diminishing, you know, the fact that we are um, just players in God's story. We're not the lead character. That's Jesus. We are not the lead. That's something I have to remember a lot. You're not the lead, Karen. We're not the lead. We are like the supporting actors and actresses, and we get to play this amazing role, and he wants to use you. You have things today that God wants to use, but he can't tap into it if you're dreaming small and if you're diminishing and like just devaluing yourself. So I want to talk about it. Unmute yourselves. Like let's really unpack this in a very practical sense because we don't talk about this enough. I don't want us to always talk about mom life. I want us to also talk about us as individual women seeking the Lord because one of the assignments he does call us to is being moms for sure. That's an assignment. And he can use us in that assignment. But there are so many other things in addition to that. So let's just kind of open up the floor and just talk about, you know, do you believe that God can and wants to use you? And have you ever limited his ability to use you because you've been so stuck on, I'm just not talented enough for this? Any thoughts, feedback? I can give some feedback on that. I think the verse comes to mind and I'm terrible with references and, and remembering where the verse comes from, but <clears throat> his power is made perfect in our weakness. So, you know, everything that we do and everything that we say and everything that we take on, we are not accomplishing by our own power, but by his power. Um, and, you know, that has to do a lot with our pride to realize that, that it's not about us. You know, when we successfully complete something, it's because God allowed us to successfully complete that task. And um, what I've been learning a lot lately is, um, especially with starting to teach, you know, having no background and, you know, someone, a close friend just said, you know, hey, I think that God has called you to teaching. And sometimes it takes other people to kind of push you to where you need to be. Because I, on my own, probably never would have thought that because I thought, you know, what? Teaching? I don't think so. Mm. And <clears throat> God has guided me, you know, down this path. And, you know, now I'm going to be teaching starting in the fall, co-teaching uh, ladies Bible study for our church. So there could be like 30 ladies older and wiser than me teaching in our church. And, 
you know, I'm just kind of stepping out in faith and, and knowing this, that his power is made perfect in my weakness. And even though, um, I feel like I'm not well equipped to teach, you know, I do feel like God has called me to teaching and that he can use me. Um, but it is very scary, um, to take steps in faith. Um, so that's, I think Karen, a good reminder that God, you know, judges not on how talented we are, but how faithful we are to where he has called us to be, you know, and, and I think with motherhood too, <clears throat> that's a challenge. And, you know, every day I'm looking at myself and going, wow, I failed big time, or I can't believe I let this happen. Or, you know, the other day, um, something fell on my daughter and it just missed her, you know, but she was scared and I didn't like jump up because someone was standing there with her. I was like, I don't even know what I was thinking, but I didn't run over to her. And, you know, my sister's like, Heather, that's your daughter. Like, go help her. And I just, I felt like a failure. I'm like, what? I don't even know what was happening in my brain. And I just like, I don't know. And so for like a while, I felt guilty about it. But, you know, as moms, we, we fail, we do things that we shouldn't, or we neglect to teach our children and lead them um, to, to Christ. You know, we're struggling with keeping them alive every day. <laughs> but then you have to like add in, okay, I need to be leading them um, to salvation, you know, and directing them and giving that opportunity to know Christ. It's like, oh, I always forget about that part, but that's, you know, where God has called us to. And I am definitely weak in that, but, you know, through prayer and, and being in his word and studying that it has, you know, given me, um, more to be well equipped to parent and teach and disciple, you know, mainly because that's the class I'm teaching right now is discipling your children. Otherwise I probably wouldn't be thinking and having that on the forefront of my mind either. So, but yeah, his power, does anybody know where that's from? His power is made perfect in our weakness. I don't know. It's definitely Paul. Yes. (laughs) Yes. uh, Paul or Timothy, but hold on, let me see. I I think it's Paul because, I mean, if you look at the life of Paul, which is... It's the second Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Yes. Yeah. The whole thing is amazing. (laughs) I know. And, you know... if you just look at Paul's life, I mean, he was practically blind, crippled, um, had a terrible speech impediment, yet God used him, which is an amazing testimony. Right, right. And it's, I do think that that's the point is that God can use and wants to use anyone, but we're so stuck in the comparison game that we're like, well, she'd be way better at it. And God will move on, by the way. Like if we like say no to an assignment, he will move on and get somebody else. But then we get to miss out on that blessing of being a part of that. And so I just want you guys to like, to really just take some time today and think about what have been some tugs on your heart where you feel like God is like, step out here. I want you to step out here. But, but maybe we've had reservations of like, but, but, but like, I think of Gideon, like, but if this is really you, show me a sign. And if this is really you, no, show me another one. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like a lot of times we do that with God, like prove it, prove it, prove it. Or, or we're Moses and we're just like, no, like find somebody else. No. And then like God shows up and he's like, who created the whole entire world? Like, are you really arguing with me? Um, and so I just think about those scriptures a lot whenever I'm just like, like, that is so not what, I, that's not what I'm good at God. Like why? But by the way, if you don't know this about me, I didn't want kids for the longest time. Like people brought it up and I was like, no, like I'm not mom status. Like I just don't get like a heart thing for kids. Like I just don't like give me young adults, give me teens, give me whatever. But for a while I had felt like God was like calling me to motherhood. And I was like, I'm just not like, I'm not feeling it. But eventually like he softened my heart three years later and that process started to happen. Of course it took 12 months to get Luca. So, and then in that journey, he was teaching me a whole different story. Um, but we do this all the time in probably the smallest of ways where we start to just think, I just don't think I'm good enough for this. And, um, so I want you to really start to pray over what are some opportunities right in front of your face that you're just not taking because you're limiting yourself. You are selling yourself short. Like God is saying, I will equip you, but you're saying, I just don't have the ability. And will you let faithfulness override that? Just be faithful and trust. Like I look at David 
and I look I, my, everywhere in scripture, none of them had the ability, but they were faithful. And then God totally showed off in their lives because of their faithfulness. That just shows up over and over and over again. Any other thoughts from Charmaine or Jen about any of this? Anything that you guys want to share? It's okay if not. Question. Yeah. Um, suppose God is basically telling you, like, now is the time to really focus on me and to just relax. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's something I struggle with because um, – all I've been doing is looking for part-time jobs that I can apply to because I, in my mind, I don't want my husband to have all the financial burden. And it's been a struggle because I'm trying to find any part-time job that works with our hours and everything like that. But I'm just not seeing the correct job <laughs> per se. Mm -hmm. And then even with the notion of if I should start my um, working from home, like my own business or something like that, that is something that scares me a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and I usually get like nervous in my spirit about it. So what then if, is it possible that God could be telling you, okay, just, you know, relax and rely on me right now. And then I will show you what to do next. Yeah, I think that there are seasons in your life. Mm -hmm. There are rest seasons. There are just seasons where you are then like working and, and, and you're doing things. And I don't think the rest, I think where we make the mistake is we think that a rest-based season means we're idle and unproductive. That's not true because you're actively resting, just like you do in your workout journey. You have to have a rest day, but some people do active resting where it's yoga or walking or something. And there's an actively restful season where God literally needs to recharge you for real before your next assignment so that you're not just jumping into something with low energy, low spiritual energy, low gas in general. Um, so if you are feeling at like no peace in the decisions in front of you, I just wouldn't move yet. Like I would wait for that peace and seek God like persistently. Um, just pray every single day for direction, for clarity. And in the meantime, be active in your rest in the sense that you're taking care of yourself. That's how you actively rest is you thank him for the time you have with your son and your family from home and you're faithful in that time and you're present in that time because there will come seasons that happened to me when I first moved to Pennsylvania. It was no more was I working 60 plus hours a week. It was just my home business and being pregnant and waiting for my son to come. And I kicked and screamed the whole time because I do, I do, do, do. And I was like, why am I just sitting still? And I felt very idle and lazy. And God was like, um, since when does this mean idle and lazy? Like, this is my chance to charge you. So use it well and sit down with me, Karen. Like, don't waste your day on Netflix. Like, sit down with me, read the words, soak me up like a sponge. Let me refuel you in every capacity. Because when I call you to your next assignment, which was Luca being born, you're going to need it. <laughs> so, um, so that's my, my advice is just, you know, just to take this season as a gift, not as a burden and embrace it and invite God into it. He's not going to play hide and seek with you, Charmaine. Like he's not going to, he wants, he's going to give you the next assignment in his perfect timing and you're going to have complete peace in it. So when that happens, you'll be ready. So for now, I would just pray and find contentment where you are. Is that helpful? I'm at least just giving yes, you. Yes, that was, that was very helpful. <laughs> I just, I'm more like, I just need to do, 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 do right now. And the fact that I'm home with my son, I'm like, ah, oh, I should be doing more <laughs> than just this. So it's a struggle, mm -hmm. but that's good advice. Thank you. Yeah. It's, you are do-do-doing, by the way, when you're a mom. Mm -hmm. It's just a different kind of do-do-doing. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Very true. <laughs> it's not like by any means like you're lazy all day at all, but you do have those special pockets of time to do something for you, to do something with your husband. So, you know, the last thing you want is to wish you had spent that time differently once you are working again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you don't want to have any regrets. So live now and yeah. be mindful of the future. Like, that's okay, but don't live in it. That's just going to bring you anxiety and it could possibly lead to an impulsive decision. And so um, just speaking from experience, because I have 
pushed the gas way faster than God many times in my life. And I think that I now understand why, like when, you know, when he like then calls you to something and you're like, I'm just too tired. He's like, yeah, well, you skip the rest. I tried to give it to you. <laughs> so, you know, and so when he does call you to that, you'll be rested and you'll be ready. True. <laughs> I just have to breathe too. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love you guys. I appreciate that rawness too. Jen, any thoughts on your end? Um, I think I'm just listening and just digesting. Digesting. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, you look super not nice. much of a a do do doer. I feel like I'm. I wouldn't say I'm lazy. Like I don't like. I don't think. Maybe yeah, I am. But like, I don't know. All I've ever wanted in life is to be a stay at home mom. So like, if I never have to do anything ever again I'm okay with that <laughs> yeah absolutely there are um, that personality type is super common too there's nothing wrong with either you go but girl it, <laughs> but um yeah I don't know I so actually today um we went to like this um thing in our town um it's called families families first and they have these different programs and they had like a family morning out so like and they just opened one actually like in our town so we went and it was actually in the head start building so they were um telling me about it and they it's like a um i can't even think anymore um you have to be eligible um to get your child to go there for free. Mm -hmm. It's all based on like income stuff. So um, I have a meeting like next week to see if it'll work. I, I don't think it will. I'm not really sure. I have a feeling we make too much money, but she's like, uh, you probably don't. You probably think you do, but you, you probably don't. I was like, I don't know. So um, I found out it would be like from nine o'clock to three o'clock, Monday through Friday, she would be in school. So now I've kind of been thinking, um, about jobs and kind of what I want to do and um there might potentially be an opportunity at my church to um they want to start a special needs program um so I'd be very interested in doing that um so I don't know it it's all completely up in the air and I'm probably way looking way into the future than I have to but I think I've just been like thinking about that and like oh that would be really cool if she'd get to school and then like I could maybe have an opportunity to do that and I think it would brought not like be a job like I don't think I'd get paid for it it would just be um voluntary but like I don't know so I don't know I, my mind's all over the place right now I don't even know what I'm thinking or what I want and <laughs> I'm distressed <laughs> so I think I'm just taking everything in <laughs> absolutely and Whatever that calling is, I think the whole point of this conversation is just to not put God in a box and not mm -hmm. limit what he sees in you. That's the whole point. So whatever door does open, um, faithfulness is mm -hmm. that like word of word of the day, word of the life, really. It's just, will I be faithful? Even if it's not a door I expect to open. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, good topic. Yeah. So let's roll in to just prayer requests. I'd love to hear how I can pray for you guys. So Jen, we can definitely pray for that. Like just the mm -hmm. head start thing, the job thing at church and just navigating that. If there's anything else, let me know. Um, Charmaine, we're praying for you and your decisions also, yes. but do you have, does anybody have any like other particular prayer requests? That yes. So we're going through, we're almost at the end of a home purchase is a short sale. Oh. So, <laughs> Um, we're just praying that everything goes smoothly from here on out and like um, all questions are answered and all the paperwork is is completed and just is just um, a little less stressful than how it is right now. Mm -hmm. For sure. Any other requests? All right. Kendra, do you want to pray for us? 
Um, I'd actually prefer not to. I just I went and got water, and so I missed everything. So I feel more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, else right. I saw the screen went black. I, was like, oh. I know. I had a. I was like coughing. <laughs> oh, don't die! All right. I will pray for us. All right. God, I just want to thank you that we can pause in the middle of the day, in the middle of the rush, in the middle of the decision making, and just come on here and um, just provide encouragement to each other and to do life together, just to talk about the ups and downs of just the journey that we're on, and just to remember that anything that you call us to, God, you're going to equip us for that calling. You're going to equip us for that assignment. And sometimes it's you equip us right away. And sometimes it's a very slow and steady journey of trust through that equipping process. And so just thank you for that reminder that you measure success by our faithfulness, not by our talent or our ability. And I just want to pray, especially today for just Charmaine and the decisions that she's facing of working and resting. And I just pray, Lord, that she'd be content in the season that you're calling her to, and that she'd be faithful in the restful season. Also praying for the house and just wrapping up that purchase and that everything goes smoothly. Um, and just thank you again for the opportunity to have to have a home. Um, just asking for your guidance in that decision. Just thank you for Jen and just for her love of being a mom and for the opportunity she has to be a stay-at-home mom. And I'm uh, just praying for all the decisions ahead of her, whether it's Head Start and church and um, just finding out where she wants to really serve and be an extension um, just of, of her just her talent and her skill in, in different places. And so we just pray for guidance in that area um, and just for peace in her mind as she's just trying to navigate all of it together. Just thank you for Kendra and for her obedience and stepping out into areas that maybe she does not feel equipped. And I just thank you, Lord, because you are stretching her and molding her and pruning her um, just to find that gold um, that is within her, those strengths that you've given her. Um, just thank you for the example of faithfulness that she shows us today. We just love you. We give you the rest of this day. May we choose joy today and choose contentment in what you give us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Love you, ladies. Thanks for hopping on here with me. Um, so yeah, next time will be in a couple weeks from now. We're like just for our normal, normal mama talk. It'll be probably the week of the 21st. So stay tuned for that. But thanks for being here. See you.